Principal, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So today we are doing COA gate questions. Yes. So in our COA subject, we have seen the whole subject. Now students requested to make videos particularly for gate questions as they started preparing for gate next year. Uh, these are questions which have come in the recent years, 2021, 2020, and one question I've taken from 2016 because it came back again in 2020 in a slightly different form. So it lacked as your precursor or your stepping stone to understand a tricky one. Anyway, so last time we had done questions on number formats. Remember fixed point and floating point formats. Today's is all about instructions and control units. I'll be making multiple videos on gate questions of control units because these are tricky ones and they come a lot. Okay, so I want you to concentrate. Let's start. The first question came in 2016. Where? They gave you an instruction format. Of course, they didn't draw it. They gave it in text. So there is a processor which has so and so number of registers, so and so number of instructions, so and so is the instruction format. Determine what is the memory space required to store 100 instructions. There was a very key word used in the question. If you ignore that, your whole answer will be wrong. The instructions are stored in byte aligned form. So what is the significance of that word and how does that affect your answer? I'll be teaching you all of that. Now, one very important thing I want you to know is, as I'll be teaching the solutions for every question, I'm going to show the entire question on the screen and I'm going to hold that video screen for 10 seconds. I want you to read the question. Now, this is something very important, which you may not realize the significance of. So, when you're seeing a solution, right? In the solution, you'll see things written like this. So what has the person who's making the solution, the teacher, what has the teacher done? The teacher has analyzed the question, jotted down the important points, and then will start solving the solution. Now, the solution doesn't begin from here, my friend. The solution begins from here. The solution begins from analyzing the question, the ability, you need to develop that, the ability to read 7, 8, 10, 12 lines of a question. Yeah, questions are big. The last question, which I'm going to do over here in today's video, this question appeared in a full page in the question paper. Do you understand what I'm saying? From that much material, you should be able to figure out what is relevant to your question and then how to solve it. So that is a part of your development process. You, the faster you can analyze the question, the more time you give yourself to solve the question. Okay. So as a, as a sincere advice, when you're watching these solutions, don't skip those 10 seconds where the question is there on the screen. In fact, I would suggest pause the screen at that time, see to it that you can analyze and reach this level by yourself as soon as possible. Maybe in the first question, maybe in the second, maybe the third. By the time you reach the fifth question, you should be able to figure out the question by yourself. And the more you do this, the faster you will get at it. Okay. This is a part of your learning process. Don't ignore it. Don't just skip to directly going to the solution. Once someone breaks this down for you, that person has made the job half already, done the job half already once all this is broken down. So this is a part of your learning process. Okay, do that for every question. Read the question and figure out the question before you figure out the answer. Figure out how to analyze the question. Now, the same thing came back in 2020. So this is the purpose of doing these questions, right? You know, you're not going to get the same question back. But what are you going to get is something similar. Twist it, turn around. This question required you to figure out the size of an instruction from the data given. This question is the reverse. They've given you the size of instruction. What they require you to figure out is how many possible such instructions can be created. That too only in one particular type. So they said there are instructions of I type and R type. They didn't say what is I and R. Of course, if you know microprocessors, I teach 15 microprocessors. I know their whole instruction set, so I know what these notations are. I stands for integer instructions. R stands for real. Real means floating point instructions. So there is a processor. It has integer instructions. There are floating point instructions. These are the formats. These formats are not drawn and given, okay? They were given in text. I've analyzed it, made this. You should reach. I've not started the solution, but I've analyzed the question for you. You should reach this level first. That's your first goal. Anyway. So this is a format of integer instruction. This is a format of floating point instructions. If there are eight possible opcodes that can be in integer instructions, how many opcodes can there be in floating point operations? This was the question. Now, based on this data, you're going to analyze it. 
figure out the bits required for all of them and finally come to your answer. You should be able to get your answer, not just accurately, but quickly. You should be able to solve this in about one minute. That again, about one minute. This, five seconds. I'm not joking, five seconds. This, as you read the question, if I'm a student like you and I'm attempting or preparing for such a crazy exam, as I would read the question, I would get the answer. Okay, so this question was given in six lines. I have summarized that into a single picture. Here is the question. There are 32 registers feeding the value to the accumulator. There is a multiplexer connected such that only one register can give the value to the accumulator. Where did this come from? This is straight from 8085 architecture. If you see in my video of 8085 architecture, there was a bunch of general purpose registers. Above them, there was a multiplexer which would select one register and give that to the ALU. On the side, there was a register select. That is the question. What should be the size of this selection logic? If there are 32 registers, if you're fast, you already would have got the answer. Anyway, anyway, anyway I'll teach you how to solve it. Next, this came in 2021. This was last year, 2020. This is from 2021, recent, fresh out of the oven. This is a question based on pipelining. So there is a five stage pipeline. They have said what is the time required for every stage. They've said what is the delay between stages, the register delays. They've said there are 100 instructions. So what is the total time required by the program? The straightforward formula, it's a little bit of analysis over here. Do the analysis, substitute in the formula. You should be able to solve this in less than 30 seconds once you know how to do it. Okay. This one is the cream of this whole lot. Okay. In every paper, get this clear, okay? They keep three, four such questions which are way above the rest because this is what separates the average lot from the cream, from the toppers, okay? If you're aiming big, you want to score really high, not settle down for an averagely good score, you want to score really high, you should be able to solve these kind of questions. This question, like I said before, took one whole page in the question paper, it was that big a question. So, average student would say, why waste 10 minutes on this move? But a student who's prepared all this will be able to solve this in about two to three minutes and get the answer. So they gave a full program. They wrote what is the meaning of every instruction, which is very sweet of them to do. Even if they didn't do it, you should be able to figure that out if you reach this level. They've given what is the size of every instruction. They've given the starting address as in where the program is stored. They've given what is the data stored at several registers and several memory locations. After executing the program, what should be the data at location 3010? This is the question. One single number is your answer. But to get there, you have to analyze the program. And it's not just a straight line program. That would have made it very easy. There is a branch over here, which goes back to some location, which I'll teach you as we do this explanation. Based on that, you will realize there is a loop. So you need to analyze all the iterations of the loop. And that's how you'll come to know what is the final answer that you want. So yes, that's a big one. But like I said, there are some questions that only the best of the students, the top category solve. So there comes a question like that. Anyway, so I'll be solving all of these questions for you and not just solving these, like I said before, giving you the ability that if something like this comes again in a twisted form, you should be able to tackle it, okay? This was the introduction of this video. Now you wanna watch this whole video, you wanna enjoy learning COA, it's a beautiful subject. This lays your platform for branching into VLSI, into processor design, into embedded systems, into operating system, into code programming, into AI. You wanna do any of these, your foundation subject is COA. Okay, so you want to make your foundation strong, you want to enjoy learning the subject, come on my website www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. Once you log in over there, you'll see a series, lots of courses. I teach lots of processors. I teach more processors than what I've put over there. I'll eventually make courses of those also anyway. So from all of those courses, select this course, COA. Uh, click the subscribe button, make the payment. As soon as you make the payment, your course becomes active. Your course will be active for six months. In that, you can watch all the videos which are already there, plus the videos that I'll keep adding. I'm adding a lot of videos, all gate questions and their solutions, plus other topics also. Uh, you can watch all those videos as many times as you want. Besides that, you also get PDFs with every video. You don't have to hunt for it. Right above your video, there'll be a link called View Notes. Click on that at any given point of time while watching the video and the PDF will open. That PDF will have the whole 
text of that video if this is the video you'll have the pdf will have one page solution or two page solutions of every question with diagram and all the steps much more than what will be written on the board anyway so depending upon the topic your pdf will contain all the information so you won't need any other reference material or any other book while learning the subject plus you'll get a pdf of viva questions of the whole subject plus you'll get a pdf of mcqs where we keep adding more and more questions which are pretty similar to this and low category also which are good for college exams most importantly you also get direct access to me this is my whatsapp number once you're my student you're most welcome whenever you have a doubt text me on whatsapp as soon as i'm free i will reply and i'll solve your doubt okay hope to see you there wish you all the best do well